Hi there, David here from DavidDemayAudio.com, and in this video, I'll be doing a full walkthrough of a redesign I did from the game Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So I did a short clip, and we'll be going over all the sounds. This is going to include some born arrow sounds, some ambiences, some of the Yurik uh, voices and stuff like that. So if you're interested in seeing how I design them and how you can design them for yourself as well, uh, make sure to stick around for that. All right, if you are new and you are a sound designer, I have a little gift for you. It is my sound designer's starter pack. This is a, a pack of over 900 sound effects that I put together. There's a lot of different stuff in there. There's like some magic spells. There's some whooshes. There's some sci-fi stuff, monsters. Um, anyways, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's just, I, I want to put it together to help you get started in uh, sound design. So if you want to grab that, it'll be absolutely free. It's a $50 value. And I actually sell these sounds for uh, that much money and more online. So if, if you want to grab it, it'll be free. Links will be in the description below. Or you can go to my website, daviddemiaudio.com slash starter pack. All right, let's get into our project. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper, and let's start the way we normally do. I'm just going to play through the clip, the original game audio, and then we're going to come back, listen to mine, and then I'm going to go through uh, the different sounds and how I created them. So let's have a listen. This is the original game audio. Here we go. Now let's have a listen to the redesign. All right, so that is the redesign. Let's go through and start with the first sound. All right, so one of the first things that I wanted to design was the undertone layer, the ambience layer from when the character goes into this uh, kind of like a death or uh, like this wraith like being. So I've, I've actually never played this game. This is one of the few like Lord of the Rings games I haven't played, which is why I wanted to really challenge myself to do this. So I'm pretty sure in this section here, like he goes from being like this living being and then he goes into the, like this world of the wraith. And then, so in this character, when he's in this character in this in this mode um you get this really dark tones let's have a listen and see if you can pick out some of the dark tones and then i'll show you kind of what i was thinking about and how i created it let's have a listen again so what i hear is a lot of like sub and like low rumble and it kind of almost has a pulse to it and so that's what I was going for. So let me show you what I did here and then I'll show you how I created it. So this is the undertone layers that I used here. So there's two kind of main layers. One is kind of this sub pulsing layer, which is right here. And then I had this other layer, which was more of a vocal layer. And I was kind of trying to emulate or, or, or give reference back to uh, the Lord of the Rings where you have like the Sauron and, and like this black speech. And it's kind of like this ambient speech. So let's have a listen to this. So it's kind of like this distant, dark speech. Okay, so let's let's go through each of these and I'll show you how I created them. So the first one here is that low sub rumble layer. All right, so the first thing I did is I loaded up Faceplant and I, I, I chose a what I call my sampling sound design. And these are just basically long files that I create that are just kind of a, a various weird sounds and stuff like that. And I kind of loaded it in here. And what I did is I, I chose a small point where I could loop and then I played really low on my keyboard. And this is the sound I got. So I'm just going to remove some of the effects here so we can hear this sound just as I was hearing it. Right, so it's kind of like this lower sound and it was almost pulsating. So it's close to what I was uh, wanting to recreate here. So so that was a good start. Next, what I did is I added recenter because I think I, I thought it was kind of uh, like off to the side a little bit. So with this now, it's more in the center. It makes a bit more sense. Next, I added adaptive verb and this is where a lot of the um, sound came from. So let's have a listen to this here. So with this, I kind of tweak a few of the settings. What I did is I started off on the main here and most of it, I just went into the fine tune here. So I brought down uh, the input here to resynthesize. I brought it down to uh, on the lower end here. I brought up the reverb side because I wanted to feel big, brought it up here. And then that's pretty much it. Like I, I, I kind of tweaked around a few of the parameters, some of the breathiness and the simplify here. And that's pretty much it. And this is kind of what gave it that sound. Next, I, I needed to make it a little bit bigger because it was kind of thin and weak. So this is why I had um, uh, Uber Loud on here.
So this just brings out everything, all the character and, and everything in the sound, and it just uh, makes everything a bit louder as well. So there you go. So that that was like that that bassy layer, and I think I have it here if we listen. Right, that's the sound. That's the exact sound that I have in the game uh, that, that I have in my redesign. All right, the next part was to actually create that, that speech layer, uh, that dark, like, black speech. So this is me kind of recreating uh, what my version of black speech, if you will. It sounds kind of funny. It's kind of embarrassing to, to, have, to play this, but let's have a listen. <laughs> All right, so this is just, like, me, like I said, me trying to emulate what I think black speech is. Anyway, so that is it here. It's kind of airy. Uh, and very bassy. That's kind of the vocal character I was going for here. So next, what I did is I brought it, again, I brought it back down into Faceplant here. All right, once it was in Faceplant, I actually used the exact same parameters as I did for the other sublayer. I actually just copied and pasted this uh, channel here, and I brought it back down here. So they have the exact same settings on here, and now what I could do is, within Faceplant, I can then load in this vocal speech that I filed, that I put in. So that's what I did here. You can see here I brought down the uh, the, the pitch here by 19 semitones because I, I really want it to be bassy. And then down here, you'll notice I have a group, and what this group is doing is it's just randomizing the offset. So every time I press a key on my keyboard, it's going to start at a different location in the file, so it's always going to sound a bit different. And that way, also, if I want to play like multiple notes, it's all going to start from different places, so it's never going to sound quite the same. So now when I play on my keyboard, it can sound something like this. Right, so you get this really airy and creepy vocal sound. So once I had those two, I just, I literally I copied and pasted them, brought them in here, and this is what I did here. And I think I added, yeah, so I added a bit more processing on here. Uh, as you can see here, so this is the sub layer, and this is the, uh, I should probably mark, mark it here, this is the vocal layer. And what I did is I added some sub synth here on the sub layer just to bring out a lot more of the bassiness. So you can see here, sub synth. I had Neutron just to cut out some of the highs, and I, there was a peak here that I didn't like. So just to, to shape the sound a little bit. I added a bit of a wave shape distortion. Not very much, 14% here. And then track spacer, this is just to blend in the two sounds so that there's no masking between the two sounds here. There's no frequency masking. So that's what that is doing there. So if I take it off, so like this. Sounds okay. But with it on, it's just even lower, more subby, more dark, which is what I was going for. So that is the undertone sound. All right, next, let's go to the bow and arrow sound effect. So here I created a, the bow and arrow sound effect right here. Let's have a listen. So let's go through each of these. So the first one that I started off with was the wood. I wanted some wood creaking sound uh, for when the, the bow was a really tight and, and being pulled back. No, um, this is just a wood creaking sound I, that I recorded myself. Sounds like that. Uh, and I did a bit of processing on here, so let's have a listen to these. So without anything on, this is what it sounds like, and you'll see it's quite different. Right, there's a lot of room sound, a lot of, it's very bright, so I had to do quite a bit of processing to make it sound the way I wanted it to, to sound. So let's have a listen here and see what I did. So first thing, manipulator here. Uh, this one is, I don't think it's doing much to the sound. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it's not doing too much. Next, I added... Uh, D reverb, and this one is doing a lot because this is going to take out all, all of that airiness and all of that sound from the room. So let's have a listen with this on here. Right, it's a lot cleaner with this on. And you'll see here I'm using a trick um, where I am um, modulating the reduction parameter here from an uh, RXD reverb so that you still have a bit of that room sound wh while it's playing. Uh, and I'm using this by uh, using the parameter modulation within Reaper. So as the signal goes up, the reduction um, goes down. So there you go. So it's a bit cleaner. Next, I added recenter just to, to position the sound in the stereo field where the bow is. Next, a bit of transformer here. This is to bring the frequency shift down just to get a different tone in the sound. And then finally, an EQ here. This is to shape the sound a bit more and make it a bit darker. So that is the wood-like creaking sound. 
Next, I had the I wanted to have the sound of like the string pulling and, and getting tighter. And this, I just use one file again here, and it is this file here, and it's just a leather creek. So this is just like a leather jacket or something uh, being twisted, and this is the sound. And it just worked really well, especially for this um, for this the sound here. Um, and again, I don't think I have too much going on here in terms of of, of uh, effects. So let's have a listen. With nothing on, this is it. Here I added manipulator. And you'll see here what I'm doing is I'm actually modulating uh, manipulator. So I'm starting with a format down because I want it to be a bit lower in pitch. And then I want, as it gets to the end, I really want it to feel like it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So I'm increasing the the uh, the format here so that it just you get that feeling that it's getting tighter and tighter as it's uh, closer to um, being taught here. So so that is that. Then again, recenter just to put it in this in the in the field. So that's the sound. Next, we actually had the bow, the arrow shooting out sound. So let's go through this one. And a lot of these, are they're just like whooshes that I recorded. So I just like grab stuff like a clothes hanger, uh, metal pipes and plastic pipes and plastic tubes and things like that that I could find around my house and I just swung in front of my microphone. And these are the sounds that I got. So that's one sound here because I really want to have this aggressive like arrow swinging or shooting by sound. This one is actually, shouldn't even be on here because it's not really doing anything. So I'll skip over that one because it's not even being heard. This is another one. And this, by the way, I created using some, uh, something, it was like something like S-Layer or uh, NVK Create. But basically I layered a bunch of these like swing sounds until I got something like this. Next, same idea here. Again, just mixing a bunch of different uh, sounds together. Manipulator, I'm not even using this one right now. I don't know why it's on there. Uh, and then let's go over this last one. Again, same thing. Again, recenter here just to, to center it. It's probably kind of wide. Yeah, so it's just a bunch of these like swinging sounds that are designed. I had them pre-designed, so I was able to just kind of dry, drag and drop them in here and layer them together so that they sound like this. Right, so you just get this really aggressive like swing of an arrow, like the arrow's going in front of you or swinging by you. Yeah, so that's the sound. But because uh, like once I had created that, I still felt like it was missing something. I still wanted a bit more punch and to, and to be a bit more satisfying. Like it sounds okay, but I wanted to have it a little bit more. So what it did is I decided to I decided to design like an impact sound. So this is what I created here. So this over here. Okay, so let's go th through the layers of this one. This is just like a kick that I designed and dragged it up and dropped it in here. Here's like an, a, a, a glitch sound effect that I created. And together, it just sounds like this. So now with the arrow shot sound, it just sounds a bit more, uh, a bit more satisfying. Right, you get a bit more of that punch and that body, that weight to the sound. So with that, it sounds like this. It's fine with it. It's kind of subtle, but it just, I, to me, it, it felt a bit better. All right, so now with all of these four layers together, this is what we have. And you'll notice um, the sounds are always a little bit different. And the reason for that is because uh, once I had kind of these layers in here, I was able to just copy and paste them over to every time the player shoots the, the bow and arrow. But what I did is I loaded a plugin called um, LKC Variator like this. And basically what I do is I just grab all the files that I want to modulate and I'm modulating the pitch. Usually the, I think it was just these three. Normally this is what I, I touch. Uh, the pitch, tape stretch, and rate. And it's not very much. Like if you see here, it, it's like, all around 10 and I just click mutate and then it, it, it's going to randomize those parameters. So it's never going to sound exactly the same. So even though I'm using the same samples because they're all going to be pitched differently and have a different sample rate and stuff like that, they're all going to sound a bit different. So that's why every time you're listening to this, it sounds a little bit different and it's just so it doesn't tire the listener and it's a bit more satisfying to hear. So that is what I did there. But with that, these were done. So now let's have a listen to these in context. Right, so that is the bow and arrow sound effect. All right, next, let's talk about the uh, arrow ready sound effect. So this kind of like magical spell sound as the bow and arrow is ready to be shot. So this sound effect for me is right here. And this is the sound here that I'm talking about. It sounds like this. So uh, when you look at the player here, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. And um, when the arrow is like ready to be shot, you get like this, this the, the, uh, the center going in, it's like, it's ready to be fired or there's extra power behind it. I'm not actually sure, uh, but I, I wanted to make something special just for that. So that is what this sound here is doing. So it's kind of like this magical spell sound effect. So let's see how I created it. 
All right, let's start with this first layer here. Let's have a listen. And this I created with a metal scrape, so just like two knives scraping together. And I just did a, quite a bit of processing. So let's go through the processing so we can see um, how I created it. So I'm just gonna take these off here. So first thing I used, uh, well, let's have a listen to it without anything on. Right, so it's just a sword sound. And maybe I should take it even the recenter and the reverb here off. Right, sword sound. Okay, first thing I did is I put a Valhalla Space Modulator. This is a free plugin, by the way. It just makes it really wide and kind of makes it um, sci-fi-esque, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it just it takes it, it takes it away from being a metal sound. Basically, is what I was going for. So I, I didn't want it to sound like it was metal. I want it to be more uh, magical. So that's helping with that. Next, a portal. Next, uber loud, just to make it a bit louder. Especially bringing out the mids here and the lows. Next year, I have manipulator. Just bringing down the format a little bit. Track spacer, this is blended with the other layers, so there's no masking. Valhalla Free Caco. M Transformer. This is the uh, frequency here that I'm bringing down. Right, so it's just, it, it slowly moves away from being a metal sound to being this strange like whoosh sound. So that is the first layer. Next layer was this one. And this one was really meant to be a, a lower or a mid sound. So I started off with a spell sound, but it, it got too, it, I think it was too aggressive or too in your face. Yeah, it was just too much. Like it kind of had that weight in that body that I wanted, uh, but it was too much. So what I did is I ended up modulating it a lot. So the first thing I did is I, I put it on some tremolo which I thought would be cool, uh, which, I mean, in the end, it didn't, you didn't end up actually hearing it, but anyways, I, I kept it on. Next, I did an EQ. This is to modulate the uh, high cut. Sorry, the yeah, the high cut so that it, it kind of modulates over time. And then track spacer again, just so there's no masking. All right, so these two layers together now. That's what I started with. Okay, next, this layer here. This is just a whoosh, and I, I think I just, yeah, I added some comb filtering on here, so without it, with it. And again, I'm modulating it a little bit here, just so it sounds uh, different, it's, it changes over time. Next here, I have another whoosh. And you'll he see here, this one is, again, just a different uh, uh, tonal quality, tonal character. And if we look here, I did a, quite a bit of processing. So without any processing, processing, that's what it sounds like with the EQ. There was this kind of like weird tone sound that I that that I was making, and I I wanted to bring it out. That's why you have this like big peak here because I just wanted to accentuate it even more. Now because I knew it wouldn't like overtake the sound, it wouldn't be annoying. But I I just wanted to bring it out. All right, finally we had this bell magic sound. So if I take off the stuff here. Right, just some bell magic sounds. If you actually want to see how I created it, I'll put it in the cards above. I, I did a little video about that. But uh, yeah, so that's what it, that sounds like. And then with transforming here, I did, did some pitch shifting or uh, frequency shifting, sorry. And then some more frequency shifting and pitch shifting. And all together now with all of these sounds, you get this sound effect. And it sounded okay, it sounded good. Uh, you have those tonal elements, those noise elements. You have that lower uh, body sound here. Uh, but I'd st I still needed it to sound more magical, so I, I put it in a reverb. That was th what really sold it. So I put ROM on here. And it just sounded quite a lot better with that. And again, last thing was to just to recenter it, just to keep it in the center, and maybe a bit on the right, because that's where the arrow uh, is pointing to. And that was it. This is how I created that sound. All right, next, let's talk some details. There's some low whooshes and rumbling that were happening in the, in, the, in the video, in the ambiences, so let's do those next. All right, so in the original uh, video, what I noticed is that there's a, like this, this low rumbling sound, and especially as the arrow was gonna be ready to be shot, there was like this like low whoosh. Let's have a listen, see if you can hear it. You get this like ooh like this really deep sub sound. And I just wanted to replicate that in, in some way to, to emphasize that the, the, the arrow is gonna be shot and the, or the arrow was ready to be shot, right? So it just, again, just some extra details here. So uh, for me, these sounds were here and I did two different layers here. So let's have a listen here. Right, again, they're, they're quite subtle. They're not super loud, but they are there. 
And it's like right before he's going to shoot the arrow. So let's go over uh, these uh, layer by layer here. So uh, first thing I did is, let's have a listen to this one here. So this is just a low whoosh that I had. And so I thought I could just drop this in here and it would work, but it was actually too much. There was way too much high end. So I needed to cut out a lot of stuff. So that's the sound by itself. Sounds okay. So let's look at the processing here that I did to be able to, to, to get the sound I wanted. So first thing is here, Substynth. Of course, I, I, this is always a uh, good plugin to go to when you're, you're wanting more bass or, or sub frequency. So again, just 56 to 80. I, I rarely touch like 24 to 36 or 36 to 56 just because it's so deep. And maybe it's just because my speakers can't replicate those sounds. Uh, but yeah, so I did around here. It's a bit subtle, but it's uh, adding a bit of bass. I still wanted a bit more bass, even a, a wider band. So this is Spectre, just to add a bit of warmth to that, that low end. And it just brings out the sound quite a bit more there. Next, I put it in ROM, because I wanted that extra tail. I felt like it was cutting out too too slow, and also just to put it in that, in that environment. Then, because I was still getting a lot of that hiss or that high and stuff, I just cut out the highs here. I probably could have just done like a, cut like this but anyways i just did this let's cut here and it was fine it worked right so that's what i did for this a whoosh layer here and then i did and by the way these are all the same uh, samples here i just copy and pasted them over uh, like that then the next one again same thing here i just copy and pasted these these over so there's just two layers here and uh yeah same idea this actually i didn't do any processing other than track spacer and that's just to blend the two sounds together make sure there's no masking going on so this is the sound and what it sounds like i'm actually going to take this off Right, so very sub, very bassy. And you barely hear it with the track spacer on because it's the other track is really cutting out a lot of that sound in there. But they're, again, it's kind of subtle, probably not even necessary, but it's there. All right, next, let's do the Yurik voices. All right, so a big part of this redesign was actually doing the voices and the uh, growls and things like that of the Yurik because without it, it feels like really bland and really like there's something missing. So... Let's have a listen to these. These are all my voices, by the way, if you're uh, wondering. This is just me that I did with my voice, and I'll show you kind of some of the processing I did on here. Uh, so let's have a listen. So I had to do different takes to get the sounds of the different characters in here. So you have like one is like the boss over here, and then you have like different followers here, and they each have to have, to have their own like character to the sound. So they each have different frequencies or they're, they're, they're speaking or, or, or giving out a different sound from their voice. So they all had to be different. So one was like very vocal. That's like the, the leader here. One was like hissing. One was like more of a, a, a grunt or a growl or something like that. So, so that's what I was trying to do to, to make sure that they each sounded individual and unique and they were all separate. So let's go through these here. This is the first one. And this is just a hiss. Uh, I'll, I'll take off the reverb here. By the way, this is just a, a reverb that I, I put in for the space. And that, that's the space I used for um, for the entire redesign. Uh, this was like my go-to space here. It's just a large, large living space, warm stone church, because they're in this kind of like cavern. So I just, uh, I thought it, it worked well. Anyway, so 35% is what I'm using here. 3.13 seconds in terms of reverb time. But I'm going to turn it off for now, just so we can hear the stuff as, as, as it is raw before we put it into the environment here. Right, so it's just me breathing. Here, another one. And this one is, is the tonal one that I mentioned for the leader here. And the way I did that is using Dehumanizer. And I thought I, I, I could make it more uh, interesting using Dehumanizer, maybe use some other modules. But I ended up just using pitch shifting and I pitched it, it uh, I pitched it down for uh, semitones. And that's it. So it, even with it out, it on. That's the sound. With it on. Right, I probably I didn't need to use dehumanize. I could, probably just could have used a pitch shifting plugin, but I did anyway. So there you go. And then I had this other sound here. Again, here same thing here. I used dehumanizer probably just to do the same similar thing, just pitch shifting it down again by four, and I, that was enough to make it sound uh, to make it sound good. So without anything on here, then with with it on. And now let's put it back on with the uh, the reverb here. Right, suddenly you have uh, like they're you, you feel like they're they are in this space, which really helps to to make it feel real. <laughs> what you'll notice too is you can hear that they are kind of panned different places. That's what recenter here is doing. So I, I brought some sounds narrow, and then I panned it to where I want it to be. So the leader is a bit to the right here. I have uh, this one here is probably a little bit to the left. Yeah, a bit to the left. 
And then this other one is in the middle. So, right, so they're, I'm, I'm positioning them in the stereo field so they're not all in the same place. So they have different textures, they have different tonal qualities, and then, of course, I'm painting them differently so they're spaced out. So that's how I created these York voices and how I placed them in the environment. There's some other ones here, like specifically like when the characters are getting shot and they're dying. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> right, so same idea here uh, with what I did. Uh, I used like, uh, the exact same reverb here, right? Warm stone church. Like I said before, that was kind of my go-to reverb for this uh, for this uh, redesign here. So that's what I'm doing here when the, the characters are dying. Uh, I'm again using dehumanizer here, but this is the same thing. It's probably just pitch, pitch shifting it down a little bit. So nothing special there. And again, same techniques here when they're when they're dying, using recenter to position them in the stereo field, using different sounds and offsetting them so they sound a little bit different and uh, they sound like they're coming from different characters. So that's what this is doing here. <laughs> Right? It makes it just a lot more lively, a lot more realistic and, and, and enjoyable to listen to. All right, let's go over some other details here for the sound design. So here we have the short, uh, sword uh, sheathing, or unsheathing, I should say. This is just the character bringing out, taking out his sword. And this I created by using a lot of sword scrapes and um, yeah, just, just uh, layering them up together, designing them, and then I had them all in a folder, so I was able to just drag and drop them in here. But let's have a listen to each individual layer here so we see what it sounds like. So it's like a whoosh and a, and a sword scrape together here. A whoosh and then this sword ring, right? So you get this tonal element, so together you get this. And then here, another layer. This the the, the lower layer. Right, it's the low end, lower body layer. So together... Right, you get these different sounds, different textures, different tonal elements, so it sounds great together. All right, this one here is interesting because here, the player actually gets uh, hit by one of the arrows from the Urux, and so this is what this layer is. So let's have a listen to this. Right, the character is getting hit in the chest, or I don't even know where, by an arrow. And you can see like this big splatter of blood, so that's why I really want to make it kind of gory. Uh, so let's have a listen here to what is going on. And this part was a bit tricky because I, I really had to choose what was going to be more important in terms of sound because you have the sword coming out here, so that's kind of important. But then you're also getting hit by an arrow, so that's also important. And they're happening really close together, so it's hard to like uh, to play both at the same time. You really have to kind of choose which one you want to bring out. And what I decided to do is bring out this one because I thought this one would be more important that that you're getting shot and getting hit by an arrow than this bringing out the sword. So... Um, You'll see here that that I use track spacer to bring down the sound of the sword because I really wanted to bring up this this the sound here of the character being hit. Anyways, let's go in through it layer by layer here and see what we have. So this is just a a, a swing, or a, probably like a, a clothes hanger or something like that from the microphone, right? It's just for the sound of the arrow as it comes in to to hit the player. Next year we have this one here, and this is a gore sound. Um, which is kind of interesting. I, I might actually make a video about this, but basically it's just uh, like some swing sounds, uh, slash sounds, uh, like uh, scrape sounds from uh, knives and stuff. And then the gore sound is actually sounds from my mouth that I created. And I kind of layered them together, dropped it in here, and this is what it sounds like. If you're actually interested in seeing that, maybe leave a comment or something and, and maybe I'll make a video about it because it's kind of interesting how, how I did that. But anyways, it's fun. Uh, next one here is, this is another gore sound. This is actually from a third-party library. So all these other sounds that I've been talking about so far in this video has all been sounds I created. This one is not. Uh, I, I I wanted something a bit different uh, in terms of gore sound. So this is what I got. And it just sounds like a slash with with some some blood or something like that. So together. All right, so my sound's quite a bit lower. This sound's quite a bit higher frequency content. So all together. All right, next you have this sound here. And this is just blood dripping just after the fact for the player. And then here, uh, finally, I had, uh, I had a kick to add to the punch. So you just feel it in your chest that you're getting hit, right? So it's kind of uh, really not satisfying if you listen to this without the kick. It just like... It sounds okay, but then with the kick, it just feels like you're, you're getting hit. All right, so it's not necessary, necessary to have it in there. It could be more subtle. You could even leave it out, but I, I wanted to, to have it in there just to, to bring it out the, the hit. All right, here we have a the fall when the character falls on the ground. So it's just like a body fall. So first thing I did here, this is just a kick that I designed. Nothing, no processing or anything on here. Next, I had this one here. And this one is a body fall. And this is from a third-party library. So I didn't record this. I just brought it in here and I, I chopped it up so that it kind of matched the image here. 
right? I had to have this rhythm uh, and I didn't want to like just layer the sounds on top of each other or else you're just getting this like hit and it just doesn't sound or look right. But because you have like these two kind of falls, it kind of makes a bit more sense as to what you're listening to. All right, finally, I added a little bit of a cavern ambience here. And this was mostly because the entire time that we are in this redesign, you're in this like wraith mode where you are in, in this own ambience, in, in this own like universe of sound, if you will. And then as soon as you get out of it, which is right around here, it's like you're back in the real world. So that's when the sound of the, I wanted the sound of the ambience to come back. So this is a sound of, uh, an ambient sound rock cave, uh, the ambience that I kind of just put in here. And the, the, the fade out here is just because it was the end of the end of the redesign, but yeah, I, I probably would have left it in there. So th this is just to, again, just to signify that you're out of this wraith world and then you're, you're back into this real world sound. All right. So now that we've actually gone through like most of the sounds, I think all the sounds in this redesign, why don't we have a listen to everything all together and see if you can pinpoint and, and listen to all the, the different elements and the different layers that we use that we talked about in this uh, redesign and uh, see if you can hear them and the, the role and the parts they're playing in the redesign. So let's have a listen. <laughs> All right, so that is everything for this video. I hope you found it useful and valuable and that hopefully you learned something new. If you want to, if you want to see more sound design, sound redesigns and how to create other like melee weapons and stuff, I created a whole bunch for like sword sound. So I'll put some of them in the cards above if you're interested in seeing those. So I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I always do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.